In order to break out the prisoners in Moonrise Towers, you want to come here first, before progressing too far into Act 2, as if you wait too long, they'll end up dying. There's a few different ways that you can break them out. You can throw them a hammer right through the jail bars while the guards aren't looking, which can be kind of tricky to do. Or you can sneak around through the back through a secret entrance and use some explosives against the wall or just bust down the wall with a bludgeoning weapon. You'll get a few rewards from this, but the best one is this armor piece that is really good for any character that has high charisma. There's also a few nice weapons and armor sets that you can snag up along the way, and it's pretty difficult to pickpocket them, but I'll show you how I did it. Apparently a lot of people are pretty upset because the prisoners will die if you progress so far into Act 2 and I can see why because if you don't take the mountain pass route and sneak in as a absolute follower then you can easily just like wander around and do something else but if you do side with the absolute or pretend to side with them then it basically leads you right there. I'm going to show you taking both routes though and the best route to go with is the mountain pass route and then doing the underdark area. Once you take the mountain pass route and hang a left, you'll eventually end up in the ruined battlefield. And you want to grab one of these torches, otherwise you'll take shadow damage. Eventually you'll come across this little goblin camp. Hey boy! You want the bone? Fish! <laughs> See that blight of coat? Swallowed all by the shadow curse. Bet he was pure tasty. You're the true soul we're taking to Moonrise, I'm guessing. Talk to Kansif inside. He'll run through it. <laughs> Wait, you, you, you're joking, yeah? But we're ready to go. You just need to tell Kansip inside. So you want me to... I mean, I'll just... I'll just go and... Uh... No! No! I like that hyena. <laughs> So when you kill Minthara, she drops a lyre, and it just looks like a cheap musical instrument. But I basically hoard everything, and <laughs> it's the instrument that you need in order to summon this creature that will guide you through the darkness. If you don't have that, I'm assuming you just have to kill all these guys. <laughs> you don't have to pass the dice roll to summon him either, as he'll come out even if you play it horribly. On the path, you'll be attacked by these harpers, and you have the option to side with them or continue siding with the absolute. The narrator or the voice in your head tells you that it could be useful to side with the absolute here to keep your cover. I ended up siding with the giant Spider-Man. <laughs> Even though I don't plan on siding with the absolute in the end, it's pretty good cover. New meat drider. <laughs> Once inside in the main room, you'll meet a character named Lan, and he's got a lot of good weapons and armor, as well as giving you three free soul coins. Well, Flo didn't tell a lie. She said you'd find me, and here you are. Carl, isn't it? You got three soul coins out of the bargain, didn't you? I'd quit whinging if I were you. It's a little tricky to steal from him though, as there's like 100 people in the room, <laughs> as well as these observer eyes. And I think those eyes are the reason why I still got caught, even though I had a successful pickpocket. Because the first successful pickpocket I had off of him, I just slowly walked away, and he immediately caught me, even though I was nowhere within his range. So the best way to do it is to just teleport to the nearest teleport here and wait till he goes back to his original spot. You could visit your camp, but as soon as you come back, they're gonna be aware, unless you teleport to another location. Definitely wanna use a invisibility spell or potion and having a pretty high pickpocketing skill. 
The same room is Moonglow, and she's got a lot of good weapons and armor as well. She looks familiar, as she definitely is, as she just came from the goblin camp, if you didn't kill her. <laughs> and is pretty much onto you, but doesn't really care. You'd want to use the same technique to steal from her, as there's so many people around her as well. Some hilarious interactions in Moonrise Towers as well. There's this woman that's controlling and teaching these gnolls, but you can sever their bond with her and just have them kill her. There's another character that if you have a Starion in your group, she'll give you a potion that gives you a plus two buff to your strength permanently, but you'll have to convince him to bite her as he doesn't want to as her blood smells really rank. She can also make you a potion unique to each character or class. You just have to offer up a drop of blood, which I ended up doing for each character of mine. I'm sorry, but could you excuse us a moment? Are you actually asking me to do this? Trading me for some, some, some potion? Because there's something wrong with her blood. I can smell it from here. It's rank. Not your taste. <laughs> You're fetid, full of corruption. With one drop, I can brew a rather potent potion for you. The rest, I keep for myself. There'll come a part where you have the option to let these goblins go or kill them in several gruesome ways, which was just too gruesome for me and had no comedic value, so. I ended up picking the option that lets them fight for their survival, and Lizelle ended up liking that option, as well as the Starion, but Karlak didn't. If you free him, Karlak will approve, and if you kill him in the gruesome ways, then a Starion will approve, but you definitely want to end up killing them, as if you don't, the hot orc chick that you can end up flirting with will end up reading your mind and find out. <laughs> You're gonna enjoy this, ain't ya? Gracious one, it is a pleasure to be in your mighty sanctum. The goblins, tell me how they suffered. No, better yet, show me. Her mind enters yours abruptly, flickering across your memories in a blaze of excitement. You long to be touched. A shame we're preparing for war, or I might find time for you. But all you truly need is the absolute. Hmm, why not? What's the point in power if you don't get to have a little fun every now and again? She gave me the power to cut the thread of life with a thought. But I can caress as well as cut. That's why you should stay on my good side. She gives you the key into Balthazar's room and... Within the room has got the lantern that lets you go further into the shadow, as well as a bunch of traps on the bookshelf here, and of course I didn't learn from the first or second or third trap. <laughs> Locked within the chest is a pretty nice cape that gives you healing every time you poison a foe. And if you lockpick this door, you'll come into a room with a guard here, and you can convince them that you belong in the room with a right persuasion roll check. And that's the option that you'd want to pick, otherwise they'll just let you go and push you out of the room. Then you can lockpick the other door in here with a drape on it, and that's the general's room. If you have a spell or potion that lets you talk to animals, then you can convince the undead dog to let you pass. And within his room is a hidden plank that's got some information about the mind flares. Inside the chest is a, another really nice cape that lets you absorb elemental damage, as well as doing some extra elemental damage on your next attack. You also find a note in the chest about his previous life that was a lot different than this. There's also some pretty nice absolute outfit clothing in here that looks pretty nice once you dye it. You 
can lockpick the other room, which has some interesting other outfits and accessories in there. I think this armor and amulet might protect you from the shadows. You also find a chest in there if you have a high enough perception, and if you try to open it, it'll end up attacking you, and it can end up eating your weapon too, so keep an eye out for that, and you'll eventually get it back once you kill him though. Inside the chest is a broken letter that's got a little bit more information about the general's former life. Coming on the way back, I took this alternate route, and walking up on these planks here, you can get to the general's room and bypass those guards that are guarding his room. On the main room here with the traders, there's a ladder on the side that you can take up to the planks. Through these doors in the main room, there's a staircase that leads down to the prison cells. In the cells, there's a few prisoners. There's Wolverine, which his buddy Barkus has been looking for, which is the gnome that you saved from the windmill, if you saved him. And there's a bunch of tieflings in there as well from Emerald Grove. You first have to convince him that you're not actually working with the Absolute. Then you have to convince a guard to actually be able to talk to the prisoners. You can throw any kind of bludgeoning weapon into his cell, but you can find his hammer all the way up top where the Warden's room is at. Once you go up there though, you'll be greeted by the Warden and you have to pass a persuasion check, otherwise you'll end up in jail. So if you toss in a hammer, he'll tell you to just give him the heads up when the coast is clear, but I didn't take that route as I ended up going around just ended up exploring and found the alternate route, which seemed to work a little bit better as you can break them both out at the same time, which seems to be the best route. As as soon as you break out Wolverine, he'll go and break out the tieflings and that can be kind of random on when he does that as you have no control over that and he might end up breaking them out when the guard is in the area. So there's a few different great opportunities to take out these observer eyes, and one of them is in the warden's room. back to this little ledge here where you access the warden's room. You can take a left here and jump into a giant pit. Inside the pit is a body that's got a parasite specimen on that. You can grab that and then head further up within the cave and you'll find two monsters. Once you take those two monsters out, just keep proceeding west and eventually you'll find some little rocks to climb up and that will lead to the back of the prison there, conveniently right behind the wall of all the prisoners. There's also another spot up here that lets you take out one of those observer eyes right in front of a guard, but you do have to have invisibility while you do it, otherwise they'll obviously spot you. And when I first came up here, I was kind of curious about that boat. I just kind of like broke off the chains myself and told me to make sure I had everything covered with Moonrise Towers first before I proceeded. But I just jumped on the boat to see where it brought me and it ends up bringing you to the inn, which is another part of the area. So when you free the prisoners, you have the option to go with Wolverine, but 
I ended up just doing the Underdark path, and that will lead to the inn as well, as well as touch up on a little bit of more of Shadow Heart's quest. I'll cover some of that at the end of the video and how to access it through the Underdark. So the second time I did it, it actually just worked out perfectly to where none of the guards saw any of the prisoners escape and just got pretty lucky. But that happened to be when they were doing the update, which just destroyed your save. <laughs> so I replayed it and ended up having to fight them. So if you have to fight them, they'll all end up running through to the right side of the prison, the one that Wolverine was in. So it's good to put everyone to the right side of the map here and just kind of like shield all the prisoners. It's not too hard of a fight though. It's mainly the warden that has some special abilities like invisibility. Once you kill all the guards here, you're still safe to roam around the tower as the rest of them won't be alerted. You have the option to ride on the boat with Wolverine and it'll just lead you to the inn, but I told him to wait out on the water until the coast is clear and once you go to the inn, you'll find him there. Side of the prison here is a dock with a special shipment and you can convince them to let you inspect it and then you can just pick it up at that point but it is pretty heavy it's like 10 pounds power courses through you a wave of sick familiarity radiates from one barrel amidst the cargo tadpoles Sleeping and scarcely aware, but echoing yours a hundredfold. <laughs> There's so many. Enough for an army of mindless slaves. A pattern of blank minds newly born. They carry only a bare shred of memory, inherited from something older. A sleep of centuries. The birth and destruction of a settlement above forming only background noise to the dream until something descended down into the darkness and the dreamer awoke. Pretty curious to see what you'll be able to do with this item. Just turn it upside down and start gobbling them up. <laughs> the other route is accessing the Grim Forge through the Underdark and just taking the elevator up. Same shadow damage is here and just have to have some kind of a light source. The shadow curse. It doesn't seem to affect me like it does others. Not as badly at least. And you'll end up pairing up with some of these harpers if you choose to. You'll end up fighting a few monsters here and there eventually on your way to the inn. As well as a interesting character that puts you on a little side quest. Where lies your guilt? The waning moon. This place is protected. For a warm bed and full stomach, look no further. Welcome to the Last Light Inn. You'll have a not so welcoming greeting and once you're allowed in, there's a, another vendor in here that has some pretty good items as well. They have a cape, which I haven't seen too many vendors sell, and a pretty nice robe that provides some fire resistance for some magic casters. Just some nice weapons and armor. Pretty difficult to steal as well, definitely need some invisibility potions or spells. Why are you smiling 
Get this really nice robe for saving the tieflings. It's really strong for any character that has high charisma. Pretty nice looking too. It's a little on the feminine side, especially with the default colors as definitely looks more like a dress than a robe. Here it is with the very rare dye that you get from your storage at camp. I think it looks better with the black and furnace though. And here it is with my other favorite dye, the Harlequin Black and White. That's the dye color I currently have on Lazelle's armor. It looks pretty good, more of a stainless steel look. And right over there you'll see Wolverine sitting there with his buddies and not too grateful that you saved him it seems. In the room with the cat is where Barkus Root will be and he doesn't even know that his buddy's been saved and he's in the other room. Friendship seems pretty one-sided and he doesn't even thank either of us. Marcus does end up giving you a custom smoke bomb, though. He was... Your... <laughs> Excuse me. Wolverine! Where is he? Don't waste a step. Premium trinkets and doodahs! It's me! Wolverine! Ah, uh, I heard you might be about. Uh, how the devil did you get stuck here, Barkas? <laughs> I'm not stuck! I came to find you, of course. Why would you do a foolish thing like that? Really, Barkas? <laughs> Unfortunately for me, you're my friend. Rescuing you from mortal peril is my right. But you didn't rescue me, did you? I rescued myself, with the aid of this helper. Ah. Here you are. I hope you like it. It's uh, a new type of smoke powder. Powerful stuff. Made it myself. In the same room you'll find Raphael the Devil, and you should have a Starion in your group at this point, as he's got some questions about those strange marks on his back. Take it easy, and I'll catch you on the next one little marks. Something important to your master, no doubt. But what? A love letter? A warning? A deed of ownership? I could give you all the gory details. But of course, you'll have to do something for me first. Let me think about it and get back. 